80,000 fans have provided us with a Thanksgiving Day sellout here at the Pontiac Silverdome. Today's matchup, the Pittsburgh Steelers and the Detroit Lions. And happy Thanksgiving Day, everyone, to all of you from all of us here in the Silverdome. Greg Dumble, along with Phil Sims. Two teams going pretty well lately. Let's first start with the Pittsburgh Steelers, who are brought in by Jerome Bettis, a Detroit native. The bus is back. Jerome Bettis coming home. The bus is back. So that means this guy's going to be running up in there hard with some emotion. Cordell Stewart, his quarterback, on the other hand, second-year starter, really playing well, making good, quick decisions, and throwing the football well. Now, for the Detroit Lions, everyone's talking about those two young quarterbacks, Peyton Manning and Ryan Leaf. Detroit fans say, watch Charlie Batch. Well, you left out one. Charlie Batch, it's just not fair for a rookie to play this well with such poise, good arm strength, but most of all, he's a leader. The Lions offense needs his leadership. And Barry Sanders, the running back, well, every time he touches the ball, watch out, it could be a touchdown. What more could you ask for on a Thanksgiving day? The Pittsburgh Steelers, the Detroit Lions, and maybe the best looking dog on Turkey I've seen in a long time. Kickoff is coming right up. Back in Pontiac, Pittsburgh coach Bill Cower said he was greatly anticipating this moment. Let's check in with Armin Katayan downstairs. Armin. Coach, your first real taste of a Thanksgiving Day game in Detroit. Your thoughts? Well, I, I know I usually taste some turkey right about now, but um, it's a great tradition. I mean, it's one of those things the kids you always remember um, watching. The chance to play in it, it's special. Thanks a lot. Greg, back to you. It is special indeed. On the other side of the field, Bobby Ross in his second year as head coach of the Detroit Lions. And one and three against the Pittsburgh Steelers. You know, Greg, the one thing I have found out this week, being in Detroit for the last couple of days, I never realized it, but it is a very special day for the Detroit Lions and this community. This game, it's big news down here. They take it serious. 80,311 fans. Here in the Silver Dome, the Steelers have won the toss and they will receive. 83, David Dunn, and 89, Will Blackwell are deep for Jason Hansen's kick. Low line drive kick picked off by Blackwell. The 20. And across the 20 to about the 22 or the 23 yard line. Cordell Stewart brings the Pittsburgh offense onto the field. His numbers 10 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Here is his offensive line the veteran Will Wolford at left tackle, Fanica, Dermani Dawson, Brendan Stye, Jermaine Stevens. In the backfield, Jerome Bettis, John Whitman starts for injured Tim Lester, Charles Johnson, Courtney Hawkins, the wide receivers, and Mark Bruner, the tight end. Phil Luckett is our referee today. Jerome Bettis across the 25 to about the 26, maybe the 27-yard line. Alan Aldridge with the tackle, and let's take a look at the Detroit defense. Robert Porsche, five and a half sacks in his last three games, along with Holland, Ellis, and Kerwin Waldrop. The linebackers, Rob Fredrickson, Stephen Boyd, a game-time decision. He is starting in the middle, and Alan Aldridge in the secondary. Bryant Westbrook, the rookie Terry Fair on the corners, Carrier and Rice with the safety. Cordell Stewart on second and six, pulls it down and runs for the first down. The orange line across your screen, CBS's first down, which indicates how far the offense has to go to get a first down. Well, they did it. You, Greg, that last play, you saw Cordell Stewart moving out of the pocket, looking for that throw. I asked the defensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions, Larry Pecatello, what are you going to do about Cordell Stewart and his movement? He says, nothing. We're going to be aggressive. We're not going to take a guy out of the secretary, out of our defense, just to watch Cordell Stewart. We'll just be aggressive and make the plays happen. First down, Pittsburgh from the Steeler 34. Bettis, big hole, right side. Pick up of eight on the play out across the 40-yard line. Boyd and Westbrook with the stop. I think the thing the Detroit Lions defense has got to be worried about is just getting overpowered up front. Pittsburgh aggressive with the offensive line, and then you take an aggressive offensive line with a running back like Jerome Bettis, don't give him this much room because if you do, 
Watch out, hard to tackle the big man down the field. Stewart now with a second and short. Need to get to the 44 for a first down. Bettis again, and he didn't get there. He may not have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. Stephen Boyd. We mentioned that he was a game day decision. He has a sore left shoulder, but he made the stop. Well, I, I kind of surprised to see Stephen Boyd, number 57, even in the game. We had a chance to come in here and watch him practice on Tuesday, and we just saw him running around doing some drills. He couldn't even move that left shoulder, but Bobby Ross, he told us yesterday, hey, he's healing fast and he wants to play, and sometimes you can do that, a little adrenaline, get excited, and you forget about the hurts. Loss of two on the play makes it third and four, and Fred McAfee is now in the backfield. From the shotgun, Stewart throws far side, complete, and that's enough for a first down to Courtney Hawkins. Seven-yard pickup. Greg, something you've seen a lot of in the NFL now, you see three wide receivers getting a bunch. And what they do, especially on short yardage situations like that one was third and four, Courtney Hawkins came out of the backfield. Look at this. And he gets behind the other two receivers. It makes the defense, it makes it hard for him to lock up close to the line of scrimmage and pick that receiver up. Easy first down for Pittsburgh. Another first down for the Steelers. Now they're on 48-yard line. Penalty marker flies, and this play will not count as Bettis is cracked to the turf. to the snap, false start, offense number 85. Five-yard penalty, it remains first down. So the first penalty of the day makes it first and 15 now for Pittsburgh. This Pittsburgh offense, the last three weeks, it's just been, well, if you follow the Steelers, they struggled on offense, I think, basically the whole year. The last three or four games, all of a sudden, they've got it in rhythm, running the football with power, but most of all, Cordell Stewart is finding open receivers. Three wide receivers for the Steelers. Quick drop, Stewart, quick pass, complete to Will Blackwell. Just across midfield. And a pickup of about seven. And this is one thing they love to do, the Steelers. Cordell Stewart, second-year starter, three-step drop. It's easy for a quarterback to read the coverage, make a decision, and get rid of the football fast when you do simple patterns like this. Second and seven, the ball just across midfield. Dennis for a couple. Let's go back to Cordell Stewart and the problems he was having earlier in the season, Phil. And we have to keep in mind there was a change of coordinators here in Pittsburgh. Chan Gailey, last year's offensive coordinator, now the head man in Dallas. Well, I got a lot of answers the last couple days from the Steelers. And one thing, they did not change their offense at all. It's the exact same offense. Ray Sherman is the offensive coordinator now. He says, we didn't change anything. What has to happen, even for coaches and players, they got to learn each other, and they had to get a bond. And I think what we've seen the last four games is Ray Sherman and Cordell Stewart finally getting together, getting in sync together, and we're seeing a better offense. Five wide receivers on third and four, and Stewart overthrows his intended receiver, David Dunn. So the Steelers move the ball to just across midfield, and they'll kick it away. Well, Bill Cower looks like he's in a pretty good mood today. We were waiting on him last night at the hotel and had a little bit of delay, I guess, to say the least. Uh, they finally got in about 7.45. We were expecting them a couple hours earlier, but didn't upset the coach too much. He handled it pretty well. Josh Miller. Kicks it away. Terry Fair lets it float. It bounces into the end zone. Steelers couldn't down it inside the five. That's a 46-yard punt with no return, and we'll take a timeout. With 10.07 to play in a scoreless first quarter. The 60th player selected in the draft, quarterback Charlie Batch out of Eastern Michigan, and he has been a most pleasant surprise for Bobby Ross and the Detroit Lions. Preston to service. And there is his mom and his family. He said, yeah, he had a few tickets reserved for this game. Yeah, a couple of tickets. Got about 100 people. No, 200 people coming to the game, about 50 of them relatives. 
First and 10 from the 20. Barry Sanders nailed in the backfield, a loss of five on the play. Carlos Emmons, the third year linebacker out of Arkansas State, in on Sanders. Now, most people, when they come in and they play Barry Sanders, I've done a couple games, and you ask the defensive coaches always, how are you going to play against them? Well, we're going to be conservative. We're going to spread out and not give up the big plays. The Steelers, their philosophy, let's just attack him. We got players, we got speed, we're good tacklers, so the heck with that conservative stuff, attack the line of scrimmage. Second and 15 for the Lions. Sanders dodges a tackle, gets outside, and just out of bounds across the 25-yard line. Let's check the rest of the Detroit offense for you. First of all, up front, protecting Batch and company. Roberts, Compton, Pine, Jeff Hardings, and Tony Ramirez. In the backfield, Barry Sanders and Tommy Bardell, Herman Moore and Johnny Morton, excellent wideouts, and Walter Rasby is the tight end. Now, this line offense, what they'd like to do today, keep the third down situation short because it makes it easy on a young quarterback. On the other side, Pittsburgh, these third downs, they expect to do a lot of blitzing, take chances, and get after the young quarterback. And now, Charlie Batch has called a timeout, stops the clock with 9.06 to play in the first quarter. We'll come back to the Silver Dome right after this. Aren't you happy we aren't the only turkeys in town? <laughs> He's a part ham. He wants to get on camera. Did you see that? Back at Pontiac, the Lions looking at third and four from their own 26-yard line. Did you just call me a turkey? No. I thought I heard that. Ron Rivers is in the backfield for the Lions, number 34, and a jump off sides. That'll give, unless the Lions initiated it, that will give Detroit a first down. That was a good move by Charlie Batch, the... Pittsburgh Steelers love to blitz, go on a long snap count, make them overcommit the first time you go up there in a third down situation. Prior to the snap, encroachment, defense, number 39, five yard penalty results in a first down. That'll give the Lions a first down at the 31 yard line. Let's take our first look now at the Pittsburgh Steeler defense. The 3 4 defense up front, Harrison, Steed, and Keevan Henry. Great linebackers in Gildon, LeBon Kirkland, Earl Holmes, and Carlos Emmons. And in the secondary, Carnell Lake and Dwayne Washington, the corners, Darren Perry and Lee Flowers are the safeties. Defensive coordinator Jim Haslam, the man in charge of that Steeler defense. First down from the 31. Batch to throw for the first time today. Under the gun and goes down. Jason Gildon, one of those fleet linebackers, number 92, with the sack. Well, the Steelers love their matchup. Their defensive line against the offensive line of the Detroit Lions, they expect to put pressure on Charlie Batch today, but the Lions, hey, they, this is one thing they do well. They expect good time, good protection on play-action passes on first down. Number 72, left tackle Ray Roberts was slow getting up, but remains in the game. Second and 16. over the middle has his man across the 30 and that's Herman Moore that's a pickup of eight on the play well the one thing Charlie Batch has shown and done this year so far is that the fact that he can drop back even though he's a rookie makes quick decisions down the field gets rid of the football you know makes it easy on the offensive line makes it easy to call offensive plays because of that Herman Moore missed last week's victory over Tampa Bay with a quad injury and he's back in action today Rivers again in the backfield. Batch on the run and hit and brought down at the 35-yard line after a three-yard pickup, but that's shy of a first down. LeVon Kirkland, Chris Oldham with the tackle, and the Lions will have to kick. Nobody open down the field. Good job, good decision. Pull it down, try to run, make something happen, but the Steeler defense, it reacts quick and has the speed. Veteran John Jett out of East Carolina, kicking it to Courtney Hawkins. Hawkins at the 12. 20, running room on the outside with only Jett to beat. Midfield, and Jett brings him down shy of the 40-yard line. 43-yard punt, 46-yard return. 
Good blocking down the field, but any time a returner, once you can break that first wave of tacklers, that means there's a lot of open field. Good job by Courtney Hawkins breaking out in the open, making something happen. Just part of the crowd that's greatly anticipating the first award of the Iron Man today. Well, I thought you guys were kidding me when you said you were going to do this, oh, but I found out you were serious, so. You're going to pick somebody out. First well. and 10 for the Steelers. Excellent field position at the Detroit 42. Pass slammed down in the backfield by Stephen Boyd, the middle linebacker. Well, Stephen Boyd out last week. This time he's blitzing, times it perfectly, gets up through the line before the offensive line could see him. You know, anytime, look at number 57 coming through there. That's the key to being a good blitzer on rundowns or passing down is to time it with the snap of the quarterback. Listen to this, Cadence. If you time it right, the offense can't react to it. This game is young, and Boyd has made at least four plays already today. Stewart, far side, has his man on the backfield, and that's Whitman. And Whitman is brought down. We'll remind you, tonight, the hits keep coming here on CBS when Jack Lemon, Walter Matthau, and Ann Margaret star in the holiday comedy, Grumpy Old Men. That's tonight here on CBS. He's not so grumpy. No, he's not. I mean... Always in good spirits. Kind of fun to watch him before the game. He's so involved with his players and so emotional with them. Shaking everybody's hands, giving them five, pumping them up. You see the CBS first down, the orange line. That's how far the Steelers have to go for a first down. And they have it on the pass to Whitman out of the backfield. Pick up a five on the play, and the Steelers have now moved inside the Detroit 30-yard line. Well, the Detroit line defense, they weren't fooled by this play at all on third and short. Cordell Stewart and John Whitman, just good execution by the thrower and the catcher, and then make Stephen Boyd miss and pick up a few extra yards. That's what the Steelers have really been. The one thing I noticed watching this team, a lot of short passes, completing a high percentage, and just keep the chains moving. First down at the 28. He's brought down Luther Ellis, number 94, leading the charge for the Lions. Over the years, the Detroit Lions have always had Luther Ellis in the middle, number 94, just keeps working and just overpowers Alan Fanica, the rookie, for the sack. But over the years, the Detroit Lions have always had some pretty good pass rushers. The problem has been they couldn't cover the receivers down the field long enough to let the pass rushers get there. Now they got some good young corners. It's helping out the pass rushers, people like Luther Ellis and Robert Porche. Loss of 12 on the play. It's second and 22. Screen pass batted back into Stewart's face by number 93, Kerwin Waldron. You know, Greg, it's, it's really a good illustration just how what a, a team is. It, everybody's got to do their part for somebody else to succeed. And I had a chance many times to play the Detroit Lions, and they would always have a pretty good pass rush, but you didn't have to worry. The receivers were always wide open down the field, so you, you could get rid of it quickly. And good job that time. Get your hands up on those screen passes if you're a defensive lineman. Third and 22. As you see there, the Steelers have to get to the 19-yard line, the 18 for a first down. Another blitz. Stewart escapes the rush. Pulled down from behind. Ron Rice, number 28, who one of the Lion blitzers, caught up with Stewart from behind. And the punting unit will come onto the field again. Good thing he caught up from him behind. When you're going to blitz Cordell Stewart, you better either get to him or keep him in the pocket because everybody was 20 yards down the field chasing the receiver. If he gets past Ron Rice, he's going to pick up 15 or 20 yards. Josh Miller has been battling a groin injury. Terry Fair is deep. Miller angles toward the sideline. Didn't get to the sideline, but the Steelers are going to down it inside the 10-yard line. 
32-yard punt, no return. Ron Rice is as fired up as the Detroit faithful here in the Silverdome. Four oh five to play first quarter here at the Silverdome. Greg Gumbo, Phil Sims, Armin Katayan, and the rest of our CBS crew. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. First and ten for the Lions from their own nine-yard line. Sanders lost a couple of yards. One of the things the Detroit Lions and Herman Moore in particular telling us yesterday is how quickly they want to get in and out of the huddle, Phil. Yeah, they feel like the, the Pittsburgh Steelers defense doesn't like to play at that up-tempo, a fast pace. So what they want to do is get the play called and get to the line. They want to get the play called with 18 seconds to go on the play clock, just about where you'd want it. But I have, I have noticed, I've been watching it the first series or two of the game, they haven't been in a particular hurry to get up there and get it done. Second and 12. That throws far side, has his man. And that's complete to Johnny Morton. The 11-yard pickup and about a yard shy of a first down. Well, this is the thing that Charlie Batts, what is so impressive about him. Good, quick decision, but watch his footwork and how quick and the strength of his arm, he can get rid of it. Sideline patterns. Usually rookies don't like to throw these things in the NFL. But again, we had a chance to watch him Tuesday at practice, and <laughs> we watched him throw, and we just kind of stood there and shook our heads. Yeah, it was uh, it was uh, physically very impressive just to see his accuracy and the speed of the football when he travels in the air. Lions go double tight end on third and short. Sanders bounces and can't bounce outside far enough before he's brought down. Boy, you can you can see they're just overpowering the Detroit Lions up front. So the punting unit will come onto the field now for the Lions as the clock continues to move toward two minutes to play here in the first quarter. Courtney Hawkins, who had a terrific punt return a few moments ago, is back at about his 40-yard line to take the kick from John Jett. kick Hawkins lost it and recovered it at about the 44 yard line so Jet gets away with a 42 yard punt and Hawkins gets away with a fumble punt before he regains control back in Detroit I'm Armin Katayan a big loss defensively for the Lions Mark Carrier their all pro safety is on the sidelines shoe off tape off with an ice pack on his left foot. An injury there, return questionable. Back to you, Greg. All right, Armin, and that is a significant loss for the Lions in their defense. First down for the Steelers, their own 44-yard line. Stewart, quick drop, quick throw, far side. Complete to Charles Johnson. And Johnson across midfield. That's a pickup of about seven. Well, Charles Johnson, Yancey Thigpen, now with the Tennessee Oilers. He left after this season. And Charles Johnson is picking up where he left off. He's become the main receiver for the Steelers offense and, and becoming Cordell Stewart's favorite receiver. Look at the last four games. 25 catches, yards a game, and four touchdowns. Second and three. Coming this way, losing his footage is Courtney Hawkins. Well, the reverse looked pretty good forming until Hawkins lost his footing. Well, it's always a good idea until you lose that yardage. Then you think, why did we call that play? But it, it always serves a purpose, the reverse. What it does, it makes the defense think, can't overplay a play. Don't go chasing guys because sometimes they can run a play that comes back. But Mark Carrier, Greg, being out of secondary for the Detroit Lions, he was their leader. He was their play caller. He's out. It's a young secondary. It could be a problem for the Detroit Lions. Four wide receivers for the Steelers on third and seven. Stewart right up the middle. Midfield. 45. Lost the football. We have not yet seen a call that it's the Detroit football. Well, they got to decide, was he down? Or did the ball come loose before his knee hit the ground? We 
know, the one thing they're going to have to do in the National Football League, they're going to have to put a rule in after this year's over. Players are not allowed to go around the officials. It just delays the game and slows things down. And, you know, you go in there and argue your case, and, of course, they're not listening. They don't care what you have to say. This is an important one. <laughs> All right, Phil Luckett, it appears, is going to rule. The ruling on the field, the runner is down, fourth down. That Stewart was down before he fumbled. Well, watch Cordell Stewart. Robert Bailey not faked out at all. Just stays in there and makes a good tackle. And then Rob Fredrickson comes in and delivers the blow. And, boy, that is close. I mean, if we had instant replay, you know what they would say? In Too close to the ball. That's great. Yes. And, and now the measurement shows that it is a first down. And the Lions are 0 for 2. Bobby Ross is not at all pleased with the spot of the football. Closing just across the 45-yard line. It's a Pittsburgh first down. You know, we kind of saw something there. Cordell Stewart running up the middle of the field, you know, trying to pick up that first down when the protection breaks down. But you can see, even though he's very fast, how fast defenses can react now in the NFL to running quarterbacks. It is more and more difficult to break the line of scrimmage and pick up big yards with a running quarterback. there. Stephen Boyd once again in on the stop. He has been a terror on the Detroit defense here in the first quarter, which now winds down to a conclusion. Bobby Ross says, you know, things could have been better, but all in all, we're not in bad shape. Steelers nothing, Lions nothing. Back for the second quarter from the Silver Dome right after this. Stephen Boyd has led an aggressive Detroit defense so far here today in a scoreless game. 61 yards of total offense, both defenses performing well. What I found surprising, short week, little preparation, both defenses, they've got in everything for this game. Second and 12, quick drop, quick throw, and that's complete to number 88, Courtney Hawkins. And you expect, with really about a day and a half to prepare for the game, you just don't expect a lot of new wrinkles in talking to the Lions and the Steelers. The Lions, Larry Pecatello, the defensive coordinator, he just says, hey, we got it all. You know, get my defensive lot. My guys like it. You know, they like it. It's aggressive. It makes them think, and we just get out there, and we just attack. And Bobby Ross in his driven. The short oh, is giving him crazy. Well, Bobby Ross, he likes things nice and neat and the same every week. So this short week has been tough on him. Cordell Stewart fighting the noise. Another quick pass. like a game of volleyball on the tail end of that Cordell Stewart pass. 33 yards on the return. The one thing you want to do as a quarterback in a blitzing situation, and the receiver is coming across on a short pattern, you try to get the ball down. Ryan Westbrook, good job, Ryan Westbrook, of knocking the ball up in the air, and the Detroit Lions, they just attack it. Robert Bailey says, hey, there it is, I got it. Terrific play by the cornerback, Ryan Westbrook, on the pass. But throwing those types of patterns in, in that situation, the receiver, they want it down because they know when they're going inside, they got a chance to get hit. Cordell Stewart just throws a little high. It results in a turnover. Ryan Westbrook, 32. Robert Bailey, 35. And we have a timeout on the field. Now they're ruling incomplete. Well, I lost track of the football. It hit so many people and so many guys were around it. Let's take a look and All right, let's look at that great job of putting that right hand in there. The ball bounces. It's caught. It's there. That and ball never hit the turf. Wow. Never hit the turf. Not even close. And the Lions are pointing to the screen upstairs. Now, to turn this over, one official had to come in and say, I saw it hit the ground. That's how it had to happen. Because it could only have been one because everybody else agreed it was an interception. You take, take another a look. look at it. Yes. It's 
No hurt. Up in the air. Kevin Abrams has it. Hits Courtney Hawkins. They kick it up in the air. Robert Bailey catches it. Clean. The ball never hit the ground. The Steelers have it now. On fourth down and three from the 38. Quarterback draw. Stewart, first down. Inside the 35-yard line. I mean, it's fourth and three, and they come out in five wide receivers. I'm just sitting here, and it's got to be a quarterback draw. Cordell Stewart, he wants to run the football. This way, it just takes advantage of everything. A, de a defensive lineman, you got to show some discipline. Stay in your rush lanes. Don't let Cordell Stewart get out in those situations. And as upset as they are on the sideline and on the field, the Lions now have to put that play out of their minds. First down for the Steelers at the Detroit 30. Bettis, left side. Across the 30 to about the 28, Stephen Boyd again with a stop. Wow, Stephen Boyd, he didn't think he would play with that left shoulder. I guess with the time off, he's got some fresh legs because he is doing some running out there. Good Here. job, gets around the blocker, and then just dives down low and gets Jerome Bettis. Led with that sore shoulder, too. Be interesting to see later in the game, doing the hitting, sore shoulder, how long it holds up for him. Second and seven. Bettis straight ahead, big hole inside the 21st down Pittsburgh. 11 yards on the pickup. Westbrook and Jeffries with the tackle for the Lions. You know, every year, the Pittsburgh Steelers, they lose an offensive lineman, they lose players to free agency, and you say, this is the year it's going to fall apart. And I always think that, especially for their offensive line, but that is not the case. Brendan Stye that time, the right guard, and Giovanni Dawson just did a terrific job of opening up the hole for Jerome Bettis. He's down from the 17. Bettis tries the right side, and there's nothing there. Mark Spindler, number 92, at the bottom of the stack. You know, getting a chance to talk to Bill Cowher yesterday, he even talked about it. I asked him uh, about the offensive line. He goes, they struggled at the beginning of the season, but he's starting to get that feel, and he likes what he sees again. Jermaine Stevens, number 67, the right tackle. He's new. He's playing well. Of course, we know Jermani Dawson. Every time we talk to somebody about centers, they always bring his name up. And then left guard, a rookie, Alan Fanica. Coach Bill Cowher thinks he's going to be something special. First-round draft pick out of LSU. You see how far the Steelers need to go for a first down. Stewart throws over the middle as his man Whitman out of the backfield. That's about a five-yard pickup. You know, anytime a quarterback like Cordell Stewart, even though he's making good, quick decisions, you got to have protection up front. And look at that. Look at that little pocket. He's able to step forward and can see where he's throwing the football. The worst thing that can happen is for those defensive linemen to get pressure by pushing back in the pocket and getting in your face where you can't see down the field. This will shock you, Phil. A guy named Boyd was in on the tackle. And we get a whistle down on the field. And timeout is called. Stops the clock with 10.52 to play here in the first half. There is no score, but Steelers are close. The crowd comes alive as Pittsburgh looks at a third and four from the 11. The pitch is to Fred McAfee, and he won't get there. Run out of bounds, two yards shy of the line of scrimmage. Robert Bailey and Terry Fair running him out of bounds. Well, this is a play the Pittsburgh Steelers have been running for, year. they, for years. It's called Toss. This is Toss 29 crack, Greg. The wide receiver comes down inside. Courtney Hawkins tries to seal it inside. Fred McAfee tries to get outside. But the Lions' defense, fast and just aggressive, they overrun the play. Norm Johnson will attempt this one from 30 yards out. He is 17 of 20 so far this season. And that one is right down the middle. So with 10-21 to play in the first half, the Pittsburgh Steelers take advantage of a bad call and lead by three. 
Back at the Pontiac Silverdome, along with Phil Sims and Arm Kate and Greg Gumbel. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone tuning in. And that includes the folks aboard the USS Enterprise, the aircraft carrier station in the Persian Gulf. The commander of the Enterprise says the crew has been looking forward to a live feed of the Lions Steelers game today. And happy Thanksgiving Day to you, men and women aboard the USS Enterprise. Terry Fair from the 10 yard line. 25 and pull down three nothing Pittsburgh Steelers they retained possession on the interception that wasn't the ball bounced Robert Bailey had it it was ruled incomplete every year during the holidays great to be here in the Rocky Mountains. And not just because it's so darn pretty either. This is a great place to be because it's home. I sure hope you can be home for the holidays too. What a wonderful world. Fortunately, there's Nasonex nasal spray. An effective nasal allergy prescription medicine taken once a day that relieves sneezing, itchy runny nose, and congestion, indoors and out. Now that's wonderful. Nasonex, what good days are like every day. The most common side effects were headache, viral infection, sore throat, nosebleeds, and coughing. Give your handyman the VersaPak Combo Pack. Cordless tools that give him so much power, it just may be too much of a good thing. Get the cordless combo pack. Powered by VersaPak, built by Black & Decker. My name is Anthony. I make it to midfield and back in 9.7 seconds. My friends think I'm lucky. I just think I'm fast. It's Armin Katayan back in Detroit. You talk about that controversy play. Bobby Ross, the Lions coach, has just been bending referee Phil Luckett's ear. In fact, at one point was pointing his finger right almost in Luckett's face and behind him to the video screen saying, and it wasn't hard to read the words, the play was good. Back to you, Greg. Thanks, Armin. First down. The 25, and Charlie Batch to throw. Goes deep and behind his intended receiver, Jermaine Crowell, the rookie from Virginia. I want to remind you, coming up at halftime, we'll be sending you to our New York studio for the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report. Jim Nance, Marcus Allen, Brent Jones, George Seifert getting you caught up on all the latest news. And the gridiron gourmet Tony Siragusa of the Baltimore Ravens prepares a holiday meal. Coming up on the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report, they're going to be eating some turkey in the studio. Uh, they got to be careful. You know, those suits are looking a little tight on Brent Jones. Barry Sanders dancing for a yard. Barry Sanders. That's his fifth carry of the day. Three times he's been caught behind the line of scrimmage. Well, you can see Pittsburgh crown the line of scrimmage with a lot of players just trying to overpower, just put more numbers up there than Detroit can block, and that's why Barry Sanders is not getting any running room. So that tells you what. Detroit's going to have to start throwing the football, especially on first down, try to loosen up the Pittsburgh Steelers defense. Ron Rivers replaces Sanders in the backfield on third and nine. We'll see if the fumble occurred before or after he was down. It belongs to Pittsburgh. Chris Oldham with the recovery. Well, Bobby Ross is going to take his rookie, Jermaine Crowell, and talk to him. But look at the pickup by the Detroit Lions. Very good inside. Run to room after you catch it on a blitz. But when you're over the middle of the field against the Pittsburgh Steelers defense, well, any defense now in the National Football League, You've got to know you are going to get hit from the backside. Here it comes. Lee Flowers hit him hard. First down at the 43 now for Stewart and the Steelers. Bettis up the middle. Inside the 40. Jerome Bettis. Coming back home to Detroit.
Well, he came home, had a big dinner, took 40 players over to his house last night. You know, that makes it tough on mom and dad when you bring 40 of your friends to dinner. You see the CBS first and 10 at the 39. That's how far the Steelers need to go for a first down. Stewart pulled down in the backfield. Aldridge and Waldrop. Well, we were talking to Robert Porsche, one of the pass rushes for the Detroit Lions, and he just he kind of said to us, if we could just get that little bit more time to get to the quarterback we can get there because we've been so close all year long and this time what happens Cordell plenty of time looks down the field nobody there third time today Stewart has been sacked will work out of the shotgun now on third and ten fires a strike complete to Charles Johnson and Johnson still short of the first down well, this is that area of the field, fourth down, where the Pittsburgh Steelers could go for it. They've done it once today. Smart by Cordell Stewart. Tries to look down the field. Nobody open. Looks for a secondary receiver. This is something. This is the difference between Cordell Stewart last year and this year, really. Making quicker decisions and just getting rid of the football. And the play clock down to 12 as the Steelers talk about it. And Stewart is going to walk out onto the field. But will need to take a timeout. Yeah, he'll call the timeout here when it gets a little lower. And he does so as the play clock reaches the one. So that stops the clock with 7.26 to play here in the first half. We'll be right back. Do you like to be the first one out there? Then get to Sears this Friday between 7 and 11 a.m. and get 50% off all David Taylor dress shirts. Whatever makes you merry, you'll find it at the merry side of Sears. Here's the 90s way to trim a beard. The 1890s. Today, there's the new Norelco Beard and Mustache Trimmer. With nine adjustable settings, Norelco gives you the look you want. Norelco, put it to the test. Bobby Ross will have a few things to say after the football game. Oh, well, yes, he's going to complain about the officiating, and rightly so, so far, but you got to deal with those things in the National Football League. There's going to be bad calls. The game is quick. There's a lot of players on the field. You just got to deal with the adversity and go on. The last time Cordell Stewart faced a fourth down, it was a quarterback draw. Not this time. Two backs in the backfield. That means they're expecting blitz. complete to Courtney Hawkins and that's enough for a first down. Boy, that is a good job by Cordell Stewart. Robert Bailey, number 35, just comes in. Look to the top of your screen. Nobody blocks him, makes the hit, but Cordell Stewart, again, just looking down the field, he sees man coverage, anticipates the throw. That enables him to get it off before he's sacked. And Courtney Hawkins does a good job adjusting to the throw behind. First down, Steelers now at the 28. Seven, Steeler first downs today. Bettis to 25, inside the 25-yard line. You know, we had a chance last night to talk to Cordell Stewart. And kind of, they were all in a hurry, though, because they were waiting to get on the bus to go to Bus's house and eat some of that jerky. Getting but, on the bus's bus. But you got to admit, you know, Cordell Stewart is such an engaging person, and you can see why one of the reasons he's a leader of a team and he's successful as a quarterback, because he's, he's always in good spirits, and he doesn't let situations and the adversity get him down, and that carries over to his teammates. Second and six, Bettis, and Bettis to the 20. Robert Porsche with the stop. Well, Jerome Bettis, I guess if you're a defender, you just got to rest up a lot the night before you play the Pittsburgh Steelers. They block aggressively up front, and then Jerome Bettis is a hard runner. Watch Stephen Boyd. Takes on Dramani Dawson, gets knocked down, and, man, lost his helmet, too. Third and two. You see how far the Steelers have to go for a first down. The pitch to Bennett. Bennett tucks inside and doesn't get anywhere near first down. 
Stephen Boyd and Ron Rice on the stop. Well, you got a short week to prepare for the Pittsburgh Steelers offense. That's one thing. Then you got to take some special time and get ready for special plays. And this is one of them. The option play by the Steelers. And look at Stephen Boyd. Just runs around two blockers, gets outside. He just made a good decision. He quickly identified it was going to be the option. He went right outside, right away for the runner. Norm Johnson kicked a 30-yard field goal earlier. This one is from 38. And this one is also perfect. Clock is stopped, 441 to play here in the first half. Two field goals, the Steelers lead it, 6-0. Back at the Pontiac Silverdome. Norm Johnson, his second field goal of the day, has the Steelers up by a score of 6 nothing. You know, even Bill Cowher, just to tell you about his football team, said, you know, my kicker and punter, they're a little nicked up, but they're tough. They're not complaining. They're coming out here and they're going to play today. So Norm Johnson has been playing with a calf muscle injury and his punter, Josh Miller, with a groin injury. And he says, you know, they've sucked it up and been real football players. Yeah. The only time the head coach has ever called his kickers tough. Terry Fair, who has returned two kicks for touchdowns this year across the 25 and close to the 30-yard line. Fred McAfee with the stop. And a reminder to you that there is still time to vote in the CBS Sportsline Question of the Week. Who is the most dominating linebacker of the 90s? Is it Kevin Green? Is it LeVon Kirkland? Is it Junior Seau? Log on to vote at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online at keyword CBS Sportsline. Well, this guy right here, he's been pretty good for a long time now for the Pittsburgh Steelers, LeVon Kirkland. What makes him unique? He can run around, make the plays in the passing or the running game, but his size. Charlie Batch. And now gets rid of it, Tommy Bardell on the receiving end and a pickup of about three on the play. Well, that, see, rookie quarterbacks should not do that. They shouldn't do what Charlie Batts just did. You don't look right to two guys and then all of a sudden turn left and find your third one. See, it, it's, it's not that easy. You say you sh they shouldn't or you can't do that? They shouldn't. <laughs> I mean, you just shouldn't be that. I mean, it shows you the poise, how well he was coached in college. You could see it. He looked right. He looked to the middle a little, and then finally he knew. Hey, I got a guy short to the left. Let me go to him. He should be open. And he's got his own personal coach, Jim Zorn. I watched him before the game. Really doing a lot of good work. On the reverse, Jermaine Crowell. Left side gets a block. Midfield. And out of bounds. Earl Holmes pushed him out just short of the 30-yard line. 35-yard pickup. Well, he was running fast, and maybe he was running scared because Bobby Ross got him as soon as he walked off the field after that fumble last possession. But usually you run a reverse because the defense is over pursuing and there's nobody there. But that time, that was just good blocking by the Detroit Lions offensive line and receivers down the field. Watch what happens. Barry Sanders, good handoff. Then if you look out in front, you can see the offensive lineman inside. A good job by David Sloan, and then Charlie Batch kicks out Darren Perry. First down at the 32. Batch play action. Throws over the middle, and that ball may have been tipped as it left his hand. Johnny Morton was downfield, but the ball falling way behind him. Well, he avoided the first wave of pressure, but it's that second one that causes a few problems every now and then. But a good job of stepping up, giving himself time to throw the football. Charlie Badge, four, six so far for 39 yards. As we spoke with him the other day, an amazingly composed young man. And now he has a problem. He comes off the field and Frank Reich goes on. Perhaps that, perhaps that tipped pass had something to do with the injury. Barry Sanders buried. Didn't get back to the line of scrimmage again. Lee Flowers leading the charge. Charlie Batch is on a knee on the sideline. I really don't know what happened to him if he got hit. You can tell by looking at him, he's in a little pain. Let's go back to the play. Well, let's see if we can see anything. Steps up, avoids the pressure. I, I don't know. Now, you can see his left hand. He's wearing a glove on it. He did have a... A little broken bone on the top of his hand on his ring finger on the left hand. 
Frank Reich is still the quarterback as he looks at third and 14. Right, time, tip, pop. Johnny Morton. But he is short of a first down after a nine-yard pickup. Well, that'll make the field goal attempt a lot easier for the Detroit Lions. But talking about Charlie Batch, Greg, he wears a glove on his left hand. I never understood why. He did have a broken bone and started playing well, so he's not going to take that glove off. It's kind of good luck to him now. Well, as the conversation continues, we've reached the two-minute warning here in the Silverdome. And when we come back, the Lions will look to get on the board for the first time today. Well, I think we found out what was wrong with Charlie Batch. Watch on the reverse play. They ran a few plays earlier, and look at his head. Hit the left shoulder of Darren Perry. Because when he came to the sideline, he kept looking like he was, you know, a little woozy or whatever. So we think that's what might have happened. Meanwhile, Batch has been back up and throwing on the sideline. See, you just can't do that. You can't go out there and be a blocker, too. <laughs> got to do what I did. You run out there, you act like you're going to block him, and, oh, man, I just missed him, coach. I had him in my sights. No, not really. Jason Hansen will attempt this one from 40 yards out, 45 yards out. is perfect. So Jason Hansen gets the Lions on board and a nice job by John Jett of getting the high snap down. And Hansen's kick is good and it's a 6-3 game. So we have a minute 55 to play and we'll take this moment to remind you Sunday. The NFL on CBS showcases regional action. The Bills have been flying with Flutie. Now he returns home to face Drew Bledsoe and the Patriots, fresh off their Monday Night Magic. Some of you will see Brunel and the Jaguars tangle with the Bengals, or McNair and Waters collide when the Oilers battle the Seahawks. Check your local listings. It all begins with the NFL today. Charlie Batch. Well, it looks like he's okay. Harmon Fatayan tells us from downstairs that they've been uh, working on his neck a little bit. Well, the Steelers so far, pretty fortunate, 6-3. to three, Had some big breaks in the game that have gone in their way and against the Detroit Lions. David Dunn and Will Blackwell deep for Hanson's kick. bring it out and so the Steelers will start first and ten from their own 20 yard line Let's take a look at the time of possession story uh, Pittsburgh Steelers have had it pretty much their own way here in the first half well you can see 33 plays the Steelers making a lot of good three and four yard plays and picking up some you know tough third down in, in a fourth down situation what they're not doing getting that big long run and not getting the football down the field at all in the passing game really haven't even attempted anything down the field bill cower as we mentioned a little bit a little bit uh, upset when he arrived last night the bus coming in from the airport had some problems he was a little behind schedule but he said we'll be okay cordell stewart gives the bettis and bettis out over the 25 yard line Alan Aldridge at the stop. I think the thing that surprised me so far in this first half, when you look at, you know, the four units on the field, is Detroit's defense. I just didn't expect it to be this aggressive. You know, you can watch them practice, and you can watch other games on TV, but until you see it in person, that's when you get a feel for it. And, again, Larry Pecatello believes in doing a lot of things, making it complicated for the offense on the other side. Five wide receivers for Cordell Stewart out of the shotgun. Throwing far side, has his man at midfield. That's complete to Heinz Ward. 24 yards and a first down. Well, that's good play calling by Ray Sherman. What you do, if your offense is kind of in a rut and you want to get it going, and they, you always hear the phrase, 
get in rhythm. Well, you get in rhythm by making a first down or two, and Cordell Stewart anticipates the throw to Hines Ward. He saw the man coverage and puts it right on target. Here's Ray Sherman, the Steelers' offensive coordinator. First down now inside the 50-yard line for the Steelers. Stewart over the middle. And a penalty marker down. Intended again for Ward. And this Terry, one's going to go against the Lions. Yeah, I was going to say Terry Fair was on the coverage. Pass interference, defense number 23. That's an automatic first down. Terry Fair, the rookie out of Tennessee. Well, it's man coverage down the field again. The blitzer comes, puts the pressure on Cordell Stewart, but he kind of bends down, take, make sure he can take the hit, throws it in there. Terry Fair did get there before the ball did. That's the first Detroit penalty of the day. Stewart on the move, out of bounds. Run out of bounds by number 57. Hey, he's going to be tired at halftime. Get those IBs ready. I'm tired watching. <laughs> Stephen Boyd has been all over the field today. See, and he, not bad for a guy who was a game time decision. Well, you know, he really couldn't practice much. That might be the key. Coach, if I don't practice, I really play well. So start a new trend around the league. I don't think it'll catch I don't on. Think so but either. Charles Johnson really had Brian Westbrook fooled. He gave just a little bit of a stutter move about 15 yards down the field. And look at that separation. But you've got to know where that sideline is. Charles Johnson con concentrating so hard on just catching the football. Drifts a little too far outside. One foot in, second one out. Charles Johnson against Jacksonville last week accounted for 22 points, three touchdowns, and two two-point conversions. Third and ten. McAfee. McAfee is going nowhere. Greg Jeffries, number 25. Well, you know how football games go. You kind of wait, you wait, and you finally get that shot to get that big play and score a touchdown. Pittsburgh had it. They didn't take advantage of it. Now this time, trying to stop the scoring drive, the defensive secondary of the Detroit Lions doing a good job of covering, but an excellent job of tackling. Inside a half minute to play for the half, and Cordell Stewart comes on to the field on fourth and ten. And the play clock down to five. Cordell watching it and going to call timeout. The Lions should call timeout, save the time in case they kick a field goal and miss it. Should have called a timeout. We'll be right back. 148 million people on the Internet. 67,000 more jump in every day. With so many people doing so much business, no wonder it's sometimes so unpredictable. And that's where we come in. We make the things that make the Internet faster, more reliable. Everything you always imagined it could be. Lucent Technologies. We make the things that make communications work. Coming up at halftime, we'll be sending you to our New York studio for the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report. Jim Marcus, Brent George getting you caught up on all the latest sports news. And the Gridiron Gourmet, Tony Siragusa of the Baltimore Ravens, prepares a special holiday meal. All coming up on the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report. Now, what you were saying earlier, Phil. Well, first off, Sarah Goose of the Gourmet probably eats everything he cooks. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. But I was saying to Detroit Lions, when you see Pittsburgh letting the clock run down, stop it. Take your time out in case they miss this field goal. You still have a chance to, to be in scoring territory and get some more points for yourself. And now Detroit has used its last time out. So what will Bill Cower do? Well, I don't understand why they had to use a timeout. I guess they had the wrong personnel on there. Well, Norm Johnson was lining up for a 53-yard field goal attempt. 
you know, Greg, it's so important. We've seen it quite a bit this year. At the end of half, uh, the first half, the coaches, people, you've got to be really conscious of the play of the clock and don't let other teams dictate what's going to go on. Here, the Steelers are in a tough situation, really, but they, Detroit lets them dictate what they can do by letting the clock run so far down. Now the, the Lions have used all of their timeouts. Pittsburgh has one left. Johnson will get this one away from 53 yards out. This would be a career long for Norm Johnson. He was in his 17th season. It's straight enough, but it's short. And Frank Reich will come on to the field now for the final eight seconds of the first half. We hear from the sidelines that Charlie Patch is shaken up. And we will try to get more on his condition and his possible appearance in the game in the second half. Well, we expect Charlie Bass to come back and play in the second half, but not to beat this point to death, Greg, but I'm going to give it one more shot here. Eight seconds to go. They're going to run out the clock. You could have had time for three or four plays. Now they don't have time for anything. You know, partner, when you're right, you're right. Yeah. <laughs> That'll do it. Our halftime score. The Pittsburgh Steelers, six and the Detroit Lions, three coming up. We'll be sending you to New York in the NASDAQ Amex Halftime Report. Jim Nansen Company will get you caught up on all the latest sports news. Don't miss the Gridiron Gourmet after these words from your local station. It's Thanksgiving Day. We here at CBS Sports salute the United Way and its very worthy cause. Welcome back, everyone. As we mentioned to you a bit later on, we're going to be... Uh, awarding the first Iron Man of the Day award, courtesy of my partner. If you're wondering about the origins, well, take a look. Well, when Phil was young, we were a little worried about him because, you know, he'd stay home from school to press his clothes. It's a good thing he worked out, always ironing and spraying. I'll tell you one thing about Phil Simms. <laughs> He never had a wrinkle in his clothes. You know, I have to tell you that every Sunday morning as we're preparing and getting ready to, to, to come to the stadium, my partner here is ironing his clothes, in his, and I'm telling you, you make me so proud. I mean, you guys are just getting it to me on national TV. I mean, I, of course, didn't know any of this was going on, and I, I'll talk to you a little bit later about <laughs> yeah. this, Greg. But you know what? I, I'm, I'm uh, excited about the award because what it's going to stand for, somebody just goes out there and really plays hard and, just demonstrates uh, what football is all about. You're going to play hard from the first snap to the end of the game. You know, I'd have to say there's there's an early favorite. It's got to be Stephen Boyd, number 57. He's been all over the field for the Detroit Lions. Well, you know what happens usually when you hear a coach say it's going to be a game time decision? That means even if the player is going to play, he usually never plays very well. But Stephen Boyd has definitely been an exception to that rule. Lions get the second half kickoff, and this is Terry Fair. 25, 30, and hit hard as he crosses the 30. Loose football, and have the Steelers recovered? They say they have, and the officials say so too. Number 71, Orpheus Roy, in on the initial contact. And Orpheus Roy, a defensive lineman, watch when he delivers this blow to Terry Fair. It's a big hit. That's what causes the fumble. And Terry Fair is still down on the field. Oh, what a hit from Orpheus Roy. You know, Second turnover of the game by the Lions. Not too often you see a defensive lineman running down on a kickoff team, so that tells you what type of athlete that uh, Orpheus Roy is. Orpheus Roy at 6'4", 288 pounds. And Terry Fair, considerably less than that at 5'9", 185. And as they continue to talk to Terry Fair, the good news is, is that he's talking and moving his arms. Well, you know, we had a chance to talk to him about returning. You can see it's a, 
basically it's a helmet to helmet blow orpheus roy went in front of the terry fair the top of his helmet caught the face mask or maybe maybe his chin and that caused caused the fumble and of course caused causing him to still be down on the field terry fair is the nfl's leading kick returner at 28.6 yards per return he had a 105 yard return on the 28th of september against tampa bay now Mark Carrier, number 27, is already out of the defensive backfield for the Detroit Lions, and Terry Ferry is one of their starting corners. It's going to take a couple plays to shake this off. So there's the good news. Terry Fair walking off the field under his own power. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the halftime statistics. First downs, 9-2, to two, and look at the time of possession in favor of the Steelers. Well, the Steelers, you know, not a lot of big plays in offense, but what I noticed, in the last couple drives, they're starting to spread the Detroit Lions defense out and starting to look down the field trying to make those plays. The team that starts passing the ball down the field and has success is the one that's going to win this football game. Kevin Abrams in a quarterback in place of the injured Terry Fair. First down at the 35-yard line, and Jerome Bettis bouncing off of tacklers for a couple of yards and the other thing is can the Detroit Lions defense continue to be aggressive not tire out because when you start to tire out a little against a running game and a power running game which Jerome Bettis and the Pittsburgh Steelers bring that's when he starts eating up those yards this is the sixth Pittsburgh possession of the day Phil and the third that has started in Detroit territory well that tells you how well the Detroit Lions defense played in the first half Second and eight. Stewart over the middle, incomplete, intended for Will Blackwell. Let's go down to Armin Katayan. Armin. Greg, a late update on update on Charlie Batch. He's still in the locker room. Bobby Ross told me he's in there for x-rays. If they check out and he's okay, he will come back out and start. Terry Fair is still on the sidelines. One last thing, Phil, I don't know, can you help me with this at all? Uh, light starts, would you mind? Back to you. <laughs> Whoa. How about that, Armin Kutzer? Yeah, I'll tell you, I was getting ready to say something nice about Armin. Forget that. Third and eight. Stewart lost the handle. Loose football back in midfield. Will Wolford falls on it for the Steelers, but that takes the Steelers back a good 20 yards. Well, the Detroit Lions, they needed a break, and this is what happens this time. The shotgun snap just a little bit high. Cordell Stewart really trying to catch it, not get out of position so he can still look down the field and make the throw. Good hustle by Will Wolford, number 77, getting down and recovering the fumble. So on fourth and half a mile, David Dunn is now back to receive with Terry Fair on the sideline. Miller booms one, done, fair catch at about the 23-yard line. And the clock stops with 13-18 to play here in the third quarter. It has not been a happy Thanksgiving so far for number 20 of the Detroit Lions, Barry Sanders. He has had a tough day running the football. And if you go back to la the second half of the game in Tampa last Sunday, his last 15 carries, he has a net total of one yard. Frank Reich, at quarterback, the gift to Sanders. Breaks it the other way. First down. And more. Barry's got ears. Well, I just wanted to say that the reason why he's not having any running success, they're getting overpowered up front. The Steelers felt like the best matchup of this game was their defensive line against Detroit's offensive line. And that's just Barry Sanders making a play. There's nowhere to, nowhere to run. He just fakes out Carnell Lake and makes a big run out of it. Historically, Thanksgiving Day is Barry Sanders' day, 145 and 89. Take a look at what he did last year against the Chicago Bears. Well, you take the emotion of this game and his talent, that leads to a lot of good runs by Barry Sanders. Sanders again. Nowhere to go. Now, the difference between the last play and this one is that Barry just was able to dodge them all the last play. This time, so many Steelers in the backfield, nowhere for him to run. You see what Sanders has done today. Five times has carried for negative yards. 
Loss of two on that play at second and 12. You know, it was interesting talking to, to Bobby Ross about Barry Sanders. And, you know, you always wonder what a coach thinks of a superstar when he comes in. And Bobby Ross says, I'm just like everybody else. Every time we hand the ball off to him, I anticipate it could be a touchdown. Right. Over the middle, incomplete, intended for Johnny Morton. The fans are looking for perhaps a penalty late in the play. Well, Frank Reich, not on target with that throw, but one of the reasons why, look what happens. Number 99, LaVon Kirkland. I can safely say this is the biggest linebacker in the National Football League. And Johnny Morton, he goes down. Look, he's open. Ball's got to be there. But because LaVon Kirkland's on the blitz, he makes Frank Reich rush the throw, and he's off target. Kirkland is listed at 270. It's safe to say he's bigger than that. I'll take a nice, smooth guess at the mid-280s. And I'm not going over there. Play clock down to two and to one. And he barely got the playoff in time. Right with time down the sideline. Complete to Herman Moore. And now out of bounds, it's ruled. We were talking with Herman Moore about how he was not getting downfield. This would have been. And you see half of his foot out of bounds. Again, Herman Moore had to know he was close to the sidelines. He's a better receiver. He thinks he gets his feet down, but look at that right foot. Good call by the officials. Okay, let me get away from Herman you. Moore's longest reception this year is 25 yards. Courtney Hawkins is deep for the Steelers. Fair catch at the 17-yard line. That's where the Steelers will get started when we come back. 11.50 to play here in the third quarter. Herman Moore, oh so close to getting the Lions started on a drive early here in the second half. Well, one of the many reasons for which to give thanks this Thanksgiving Day, Terry Fair is not only okay, he's back onto the field for the Detroit Lions after taking that hit a few moments ago. First down for Cordell Stewart and the Steelers from the 18-yard line. Far side complete. 38 is Jerome, or 36 is Jerome Bettis. So the bus out of the backfield. No, make it number 38, John Whitman. And I guess, of course, who made the tackle? Stephen Boyd, number 57, just running around. You know, he didn't tire out at halftime. He still got the energy. Watch what happens. He reads it's a pass. He's looking for the inside receiver. His guy doesn't get it. Keeps hustling, missed tackle. He makes the tackle down the field. Bettis. Bettis is hit head on by Ron Rice. Ron Rice coming up from his safety position to take the bus on head on. We'll remind you to log on to www.nfl.com. Check out all the playoff scenarios as the teams qualify for the postseason at www.nfl.com or on America Online at keyword Team NFL. You see the first down, CBS first down. I like the color, nice and orange. I can spot it. Second and eight, penalty marker down. Another penalty marker down now as the pass is incomplete. So there are two markers down from two officials on the near side of the field. Well, Robert Porsche, number 91, looked like he could have been offsides. And it was interesting talking to him yesterday. It is offsides against Detroit. Then hands to the face against Detroit, too. But we were talking to him yesterday, asking him, how are you getting those quick jumps outside and uh, trying to beat two the Two fouls on the defense. Offside, defensive end is declined. Illegal hands to the face. Number 32 is accepted. Five yards, automatic. First down. Watch Robert Porsche, top of your screen. Just uh, anticipating, almost gets there. Then Brian Westbrook, number 32. Charles Johnson comes off the line. You just cannot take your hands and deliver a blow to the face mask of the opponent. But Talking about Robert Porsche, what he does 
And when he thinks it's going to be a pass, he gets down low on the outside, and he looks underneath the center to watch the quarterback's hands. And when that quarterback clenches his hands because he's anticipating the snap from the center, that's when he takes off. That time was a little too quick. First and 10 Steelers from their own 40. Bettis. Just over the line of scrimmage, a pickup of about two before Ron Rice makes the stop. Now, you know, that's nothing new. A lot of guys in the NFL do that. They try to get down low those defensive ends and, and try to get the something that the quarterback does that gives things away so they can get that quick jump. And I always knew, you know, anytime my defense, offensive linemen were giving up sacks, they come back, it's got to be you. You're doing <laughs> something. Check what you're doing. You're giving it away. Yeah, your stance. Are you licking your fingers and... The fans cheer as Charlie Batch comes back onto the field from the locker room. Meanwhile, second and eight. Stewart going to hold on to it and run out of bounds by Aldridge. So it tells you, you know, this league is an amazing thing, the National Football League. If something's successful one year, don't worry. They'll adjust the following year to take it away. And Cordell Stewart, now he hasn't slowed down. If he has, it's just a little bit. But when he tries to run the football now, as you watch their games, the defenses react so much faster this year than he did last year just running. Third and eight. clock is at one and tries to call timeout and call timeout in time to avoid the delay of game penalty so the Steelers burn their first timeout of the second half here and uh, as Cordell calls signals Charlie Batch is warming up on the sideline in anticipation of a return we anticipate Charlie Batch's return and that's a pretty good sign there when you put your helmet on. Well, and it makes, mom, too. Yeah, it makes her feel good. You know, you got to worry about your son. When he goes to the locker room, he doesn't come back out with the team. But then they can get back in the game and cheer with the fans. Third and eight. Blitz. Stewart downfield. Incomplete. Hines Ward, his intended receiver. And Terry Fair was with him step for step. Terrific throw by Cordell Stewart, but let's watch Robert Porsche, number 91. Look at that. He's looking in there, trying to get a little... Oh, he's, what he's watching is the center trying to see when he squeezes that football just a little bit more, makes a move. That's when he takes off, and look at the throw down the field. Terry Fair just deflects it, makes it incomplete. Brian Stabline back for the punt for the Lions. Oh, terrific kick by Miller. Inside the five and bounces into the end zone. 58 yard punt, no return, and Charlie Batch is going to take the field for the Detroit Lions when we come back. Well, Charlie Batch had his helmet on, was all set to come back in, but then removed it. They began massaging the back of his neck, and Frank Reich is in at quarterback now as Batch watches from the sideline with his helmet on. Reich going to throw on first down. Has time, throws. Incomplete intended for Herman Moore. Boy, good job by Frank Reich. Avoiding the blitz by the Pittsburgh Steelers. You and see Courtney Hawkins, number 88, leaving the game. And now Batch trots onto the field. And the family cheering section comes to its feet. Batch to throw right away. Blitz. And he throws it away and he's going to get a flag. Earl Holmes in on Batch. You know, this is always a tough situation for the quarterback. Intentional grounding. There wasn't a receiver very close by. It was a screen play set up by the Detroit Lions. Pittsburgh overruns it. Intentional grounding. Offense number 10. 
The penalty is loss of down at the spot of the foul, making it third down. Tommy third Vardell, down. that's who they're trying to throw it to. He gets caught inside. So you're the quarterback. You drop back. You're under pressure. Now you're going to throw it away to avoid the sack. Now, if you throw it close to the guy you want to throw it to, it's going to be intercepted. So you kind of got, you get caught in between. You throw it to the open space, they're going to throw the flag. So with the loss of down, it's now third and 25 from the five-yard line. Quick slam, incomplete, intended for Morton. And the Lions will kick from deep in their own end zone. Well, the Steelers just putting the pressure on the Lions offense. Two days to get ready. A lot of defenses in. A lot of blitzes. Johnny Morton against Dwayne Washington. Even if he catches that ball, it's only for a few yards. But a young quarterback, an offensive line, who they think they match up well against, the Steelers are being very aggressive. Jet will kick it away to Will Blackwell. Blackwell, fair catch at the Detroit 47-yard line. We'll take this opportunity to remind you Friday on CBS, Raggedy Ann and Indy come to life with your favorite ice skating stars. Plus, Team USA takes on the world in the hottest skating event on ice, Snowden's Raggedy Ann and Indy Holiday Show, plus Ice Wars. Great family entertainment Friday on CBS. Charlie Batch going over some things on the sideline. Greg Gumbel, Phil Sims, Armin Katayan, and the rest of our CBS crew here in the Pontiac Silverdome. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Well, one more time, the Steelers have a chance to really distance themselves from Detroit. And again, Detroit's defense, they got to come up big. Stewart throws. And is that inbound? It is not. It's out of bounds. Will Blackwell with the diving catch, but came down out of bounds. Well, this is going to be one of those games when the Steelers go back and they watch the film, regardless of what happens, they're going to look and say, boy, we had a lot of... A lot of opportunities to make some plays to put this game, make it tough on Detroit. Good safe throw by Cordell Stewart, but just too far outside. Straight drop for Stewart this time, goes down the field, and he is popped in the air and caught. Will Blackwell made the reception. And it's now ruled out of bounds. Has this been a strange game with pop-ups? A lot of strange things have happened. Greg, what happens this time down the field? The ball is tipped up. Now watch Will Blackwell. One, the second foot comes down out of bounds. And that... That's a terrific call. That is a terrific call. Because I was sitting here wondering what happened. Did the receiver get pushed out of bounds? And even if he did, he could still take it because the ball was hit by the defender. Look at the left foot. Just goes out of bounds on the white. And now the Steelers with third and ten. And once again, the Lions defense trying to stand tall. Blitz, Stewart. Complete to McAfee. McAfee going for first down yardage. Picked up 11 on the play, and that's enough for a first down. Well, that is a terrific call by the Pittsburgh Steelers. Detroit, they've got the rhythm down now, the Detroit defense. Every time it's a passing situation, Detroit's coming with the blitz, trying to be aggressive. Cordell Stewart buys that extra second. There's nobody there for Fred McAfee. Then he turns the speed on and just gets enough to get the first down. McAfee is eighth year in the NFL. First down now at the 36-yard line. Bettis. Okay. And Kerwin Waldrop makes the stop after three yards. Well, Kerwin Waldrop and Luther Ellis inside. They have been the two guys that have done a good job slowing down Jerome Bettis. Hey, Greg, what do you think? Orange, you know, but what I like, it matches. See? It doesn't match. Yes, it does. It's in the same family, but it doesn't match. It's coordinating. That's what it's about. 
second and eight. Stewart, far side, complete. Charles Johnson, enough for the first down. You just like disagreeing with him. That's why you said that. But you can see the strength of Cordell Stewart's arm right there, and that, that's the kind of thing he's been doing so well. We've said it a couple times, but you, you can see the difference with him this year, getting rid of the football, and Charles Johnson, he's the go-to guy. He's a Colorado, from Colorado University, same as Cordell Stewart. First down, Steelers now up to Detroit, 24. Play action, Stewart with time. Pulls it down, eludes three in the backfield and throws, and it's complete. Blackwell, touchdown, off of the hands of Jerome Dennis. Well, the Pittsburgh Steelers have got a lot of good bounces today, and just put this one on top of the rest of them. It all starts because Cordell Stewart gets out of the tough jam in the backfield. Jerome Bettis, he can't catch that high football. But Will Blackwell. Well, sometimes you got to be lucky. The bounces the ball has taken in this game have been amazing. Norm Johnson, who has been perfect in extra points this season. And in fact, has an NFL record 272 in a row. That's a jinxing. <laughs> 273. Will Blackwell, the recipient of a friendly bounce for his first touchdown of the season. And the Steelers now lead it 13 to 3. Bill Cowher, Steelers, the recipient of some lucky bounces today. 6.56 to play here in the third, and they lead it by 10. Well, he's got to be a little thankful, that's for sure. And he's trying. When I saw him during the commercial, he's pumping his team up. He knows he's gotten some breaks, but you got to go out there and still be physical and make things happen. Terry Fair is deep for the Lions. brought down just shy of the 25-yard line. We'll take this opportunity to remind you tonight on CBS, Jack Lemon, Walter Matthau, and Ann Margaret Starr in the holiday com comedy Grumpy Old Men. Then 48 Hours takes you behind the scenes with the police to see how modern science can help crack unsolved murder mysteries tonight here on CBS. You know that Grumpy Old Men thing has undergone some change. Originally, it was cast differently. Whoa, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dang. I tell you, I don't look good old or young. That's we, bad. We need some turkey, you know. <laughs> oh. Thanks, guys. That was awful nice of you. First down from the 25. Quick pass. Batch to the far side. And Herman Moore. Well, the fact now that the Detroit Lions are down 13 to 3, this will give them a sense of urgency, I think, with the coaching staff and the players. I think they need that. You know, you got to come out here and be a little more aggressive with the play calling. Put the ball in the hands of Charlie Batch a little. You can see he can throw the football. He's, he's going to make good decisions for you and try to get the ball to Herman Moore. And that should open things up more for Barry Sanders. Sanders, first down. Across the 35, a pickup of four on the play. Greg, that's exactly what I think it will do. If you keep throwing the ball and you have success, it will make the Steelers now not be so conscious of stopping Barry Sanders. And, that's when he pops that run in there and gets you 40 or 50 or scores a touchdown for you. With 19 yards today, Barry Sanders is now 11 shy of 15,000 for his career. Sanders. And that doesn't get him anywhere. Well, you know, they're doing a good job of surrounding Barry Sanders. And, and what you've got to do, the Steelers on defense, when you're going to stop him, You've got to stop him from bouncing outside. He takes the handoff. It's inside. If the defense commits too much, there's a big hole on the outside to run. And we've seen already a couple times today, even if you're in good position, you still can't tackle him. But the Steelers have done a, they've done an outstanding job so far of 
keeping Barry Sanders inside, not letting him break those big ones. Double tight end set up on second and 11. Batch going to keep it. This side throws, got his man in the middle of the field. That's Moore across midfield, and that's first down. Talking to Bobby Ross and it's Sylvester Froome, the offensive coordinator, the best thing Charlie Batch does is play action pass, and look at that. Holds on to the football, waits till Earl Holmes comes down, and then finds Herman Moore in that space between the linebackers and the defensive backs. Here's the offensive coordinator of the Lions, Sylvester Croom. First down to 46 for Detroit. Flea flicker. Batch. Barry. The Steelers had it covered downfield. Herman Moore down the middle of the field had two defensive backs on him. Well, they had two defensive backs on each of the receivers going down the field. And you think, well, we got things moving now. Let's get... But, fake him with Barry Sanders but you know what happens it just goes so fast for the Detroit Lions they hand it off and Barry Sanders threw it back so quick you could see the defensive backs were able to react and get back and take away the wide receivers loss of seven on the play Batch throws it back to Sanders with blockers and running room 40 35 down at the 32 maybe the 33 yard line yard pickup for Sanders and a first down for the Lions. I tell you, this is another good play call. I like the one they tried to flea flicker. This one, fake it to Barry Sanders. Roll right. Think you're trying to throw it right in the play action. Barry Sanders blocked. Let his guy go. There's nobody there to cover him. And then he makes something happen once he gets the football. Jim Pine, the center, number 61, out in front. Lead. Oh, here comes Barry. Three wide receivers now. First down from the 32. Sanders. No cut back room for Barry. Well, when you're the type of runner like him that can just make things happen, and if he doesn't see a hole right as immediately when he takes the football, sometimes I think he gets a little too impatient, cuts it back, and that time the defense is just standing there waiting for him. Kind of interesting, wasn't it? We were talking to the right guard, Jeff Hardings, and he was talking about blocking for Barry Sanders, and he goes, you know, we call running plays. It doesn't mean anything. You just block, and he just picks holes wherever he wants. And Sanders tripped up again in the backfield. This time, Lee Flowers, number 41, up from his safety position. Well, I thought Detroit really had it going with their offense. The play calling was kind of getting the crowd all revved up and, you know, a little conservative there. I know there's a rookie quarterback, but, again, he's not showing you he's going to make mistakes in his decision-making and throwing the football. No interceptions in his last three games. So why not let him throw the football a little more? You had the defense on the run. Now you let them get you in a tough situation. Third and ten. The juggling act is the rookie Jermaine Crowell. Well, that's the difference in this football game today. The Steelers have had a few lucky bounces, but the Detroit Lions, when they are getting a chance to make the plays, they're not making any look at death row. That is perfect. Carnell Lake is all over Jermaine Crowell, just doesn't come up with the catch. And now, Jason Hansen, now John Jett looking to the sideline. They'll set it down, and they look a bit confused. They're Stephen missing Boy somebody, Stephen Boyd. And they're going to call timeout with the play clock with the play clock down to four. Well, coaches can get mad a lot of uh, mad about a lot of things, you know, bad play and all these things. But when you're not organized, that is the worst. And when you have a field goal unit out there and you don't get enough players on the field, that will upset a coach more than anything. And Stephen Boyd wasn't supposed to be out there. He realized it just ran out. He was going to take a spot for somebody. So heads up play by him. Meanwhile, Stephen Boyd has put together a heck of a defensive game for the Detroit Lions today. Well, 
you know, Greg, that's just another illustration of a guy being into the game, paying attention. Immediately, he realized there was 10 guys on the field goal unit. He goes running out there. This will be a 51-yard attempt by Jason Hansen. He made one from 45 earlier. Right down the middle with room to spare. So Hansen converts the field goal and closes the Steelers' lead now to 13 to 6. Well, Greg, it's Thanksgiving. It isn't Halloween, but it's been a strange game today. It really has. All the things that have happened. The interception that is called wrong against the Detroit Lions. Then the ball pops into the air. The Steelers have a chance to make the play. And then the worst of all for the Detroit Lions. The tip pass from Bettis to Blackwell. Put that one in the playbook. Man. And you know, I, I love Cordell Stewart's reaction after the ball was tipped by Jerome Bettis and Will Blackwell catches it for a touchdown. He went flying down the field. He goes, Man, that's a gift. And you, know, you don't get many of those, so you got to be happy when you do get them. On Monday morning in the statistics, it looks just like a spiral strike. It was a great throw by me. That's what happens. That's right. Minute 44 to play here in the third quarter. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours. Well, I think the fact that Detroit fell, fell behind 13 to three, we could see how the crowd got back into the game. They were throwing the football, trying some different plays, and I think that's what they need to get back against the Pittsburgh Steelers. Hanson with a booming kick. And Blackwell will not run it out of the end zone. So the Steelers would start first down from their own 20. We were having conversations with Cordell Stewart last night. And one of the things that he said he's doing differently is the way he views game film now. Well, he says he's working harder at it. And uh, Mike Tomzak goes with him all the time. Mike Tomzak's the backup quarterback. And they go in and watch a lot of film together. Those are the little things that make you, that make you pay attention to those details that are different between winning and losing. And Mike Tomzak, he knows those things. I mean, he's been around a long time. Played a lot of quarterbacks, so he's helping Cordell Stewart because Cordell told us last year, what he say? Chan Gailey led me by my hand. He did everything for me, so we're making him grow up a little and be responsible. That is overwhelmed by that Detroit defense. Robert Porsche, Darius Holland. There's Darius Holland. Well, the defensive line has really played well and aggressive and hard today for the Detroit Lions. And look what Robert Porsche did. Darius Holland has the tackler, and he's giving him some of that extra business. But Robert Porsche held the blocker up well, waited for the runner to come to him, and he joined on the tackle. Second and 12. And the crowd comes alive. Stewart, far side. Terry Fair on his man, and he's going to get a flag called on. Charles Johnson with the reception, and Terry Fair was all over him. Well, Terry Fair, he's right there, and he has a chance to make the play. He just got to turn around and look at the quarterback or the ball being thrown. Watch what happens. Pass interference, defense number 23. The penalty is declined. The pass was complete. First down. You know, that's a great catch by Charles Johnson. It really is. When the defensive back never turns around and looks for the football, these receivers in the league now, almost all of them, they go up and go over and make the adjustments to make the catch. And that's what you got to do. And Cordell Stewart that time st stood in the pocket against the blitz, stepped up and made the perfect throw. Pittsburgh now at their own 48. Bettis. Bus rolls across midfield and into Detroit territory. That last play by Cordell Stewart and Charles Johnson, though, that was big. I mean, it just took away the crowd. It took it out of the game. It took away the momentum that this Detroit defense had going for it. And as his third quarter comes to an end, now the Lions, somebody on defense is going to have to make a play to get this crowd and their team back into it. 
And that'll do it for the end of the third quarter. That's the end of the third quarter with the score of the Steelers 13 and the Lions 6. We'll come back after this message and a word from your local station. Still to come, the Iron Man Award of the Day. 15 minutes from now, we'll find out. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Giving day, welcome back to the Pontiac Silverdome. The Steelers leading Detroit by a score of 13 to 6. Steelers with the football second and seven at the Detroit 49 yard line. Jerome Bettis, the heart of the Pittsburgh ground game. You see CBS first down, the orange line from top to bottom on your screen. Over the middle, pass is complete. And now it's now it's ruled an interception. Rob Fredrickson all over Mark Bruner. I'm going to tell you why the official says it's an interception. They went to the ground. To me, it looked like Rob Fredrickson had control. They hit the ground, and that's when Mark Bruner tore it away from him. The ruling on the field is interception. The ball was, the runner was down and then taken away. First down. You know, it's just another strange play in a day full of strange it, plays. It really is. Cordell Stewart goes to the right spot. There's nobody in the middle of the field. He sees it. Look, Rob Fredrickson has it. Then they hit the ground. And when they do, Mark Bruner pulls it away. Boom, you can see it's in the chest of Rod Fredrickson. Mark Bruner wins the battle down on the ground, though. He has possession of the ball. He has it. And now you see it pulled away. Good call. First down, Lions, their own 26-yard line. And Charlie Batch goes back to work. Quick pass this side, Johnny Morton. Morton, the 30, run out of bounds at about the 32-yard line. You know, you can see how quick Charlie Batch can just get the ball, throw it to the outside, and the, what I like is the speed of the ball, and it's such a perfect spiral every time he throws it, but so different for a rookie to come in and control a football team the way he has. 8 of 13 today for 90 yards, but Bobby Ross says when he gets in that huddle, he has such control of the players, and they all respond to his personality, how he calls the play, He's so sure of himself. That's going to roll left. Throws now to Bardell. Bardell, first down. And those are the reasons why, Greg, that this guy's a starting quarterback. I mean, they didn't come into this season thinking that he could be the starter, being a second-round draft pick. Watch what happens. Pretty mobile quarterback. Not a guy that's going to run down the football field, though. He knows he's in trouble, can't go anywhere. Knows Tommy Bardell's in the flat. Throws it to him. When teams wanted to work him out, they had trouble finding places for him to work out. Well, that's a sure sign you go to a small school. Because in the winter, you have no indoor facility to throw the football. That is Herman Moore's longest reception of the season at 35 yards. Well, you got a quarterback with a strong arm. Herman Moore does a good job, stays to the outside. He waits to the last second to turn in, and Charlie Bass just throws a rocket right down the middle. Watch the free safety up top. That's the person Charlie Bass has to look off. The fake, he goes, he looks to the left, keeps him over there, then he throws a line drive to Herman Moore for the first down. From the 26, Barry Sanders. And Sanders losing yardage again. That's the seventh time he has carried today for negative yardage. Well, Greg, you were talking about Charlie Batch coming from Eastern Michigan. Just with such ease, this is what you got to like from a quarterback in the National Football League. When you can get the, down, the ball down the field just in a normal throwing motion, it doesn't take a lot of effort. That gives you a chance to design and call plays that where you can get big plays out of them. Second and 13. Sanders running with a missed time. Breaks it this side to the 25. Lee Flowers corrals him after a six-yard game. You know, you hear a lot of times, too, that defensive guys, when they play Barry Sanders, they say the worst thing that can happen if you're a defender is just trying to find him. And when he gets behind his offensive line, 
in behind blockers. Sometimes you're you're going to go tackle him. You go, where is he? Well, usually, just look for that daylight. He pops out of there and goes a running. Did you say goes a running? Something like that. Third and seven. I play football. Tremendous effort. You said rocket a moment ago. Oh, well, there's what a couple a things. Throw. What a throw. What an effort by Johnny Morton to make the catch. But as I stand up here, you know, I kind of play quarterback sometimes. Charlie Batch drops back, and he's getting ready to throw this ball, and I'm going, that is trouble. That's interception. But he just, what happened is he just threw it by Darren Perry, the free safety. He couldn't even react to it. Johnny Morton pleading his case that he had the football and possession enough for the touchdown. He did. 43-yard field goal attempt. Hansen. The kick is going to be wide right. That stops the clock. 11.50 to play in regulation, and the Lions' attempt to grab the lead comes up short. Well, it's a game of bounces, and they are not going Detroit's way. Look at the throw by Charlie Batch. Johnny Morton, the wide receiver. Watch this catch. It looks like it's free. He grabs it, definitely has control, hits the ground. Touchdown. Well, no, it's not. They didn't give it to him. Ruled incomplete. First down from the 33 for the Steelers. And Bettis get head on after about a two-yard game. I will bet you every year they seem to have a vote on instant replay, but I think the Lions, I don't know what they voted this past offseason, but it might change. They'd go for it. I think. <laughs> I know Bobby Ross would after he watches the film of today's game and sees how many times instant replay could have helped his football team. So, so. Of course, every time there's controversial calls, that subject comes up. On second and eight. Bettis again. And the bus rumbles for a first down and more across the 45 and out to about the 47 yard line. And Jerome Bettis fired up in front of his hometown. Well, we were looking forward to this matchup of running backs today, but so far, Jerome Bettis has had the better of it. Tough day for both of them. Defensive short week. They have been more aggressive. That's why the offense is both teams are struggling. Bettis on first down for a couple. And it kind of shows you, even though neither runner is having success today, how many ways you can get it done in the National Football League. Barry Sanders, let's hand it off to Barry and then see what happens. And Jerome Bettis, the exact opposite. They call a play that's going to go to the right side. It almost always goes over there. He just waits to see somebody push a guy a half inch. He plows in there and gets a few extra yards if he has to. The ball right at midfield now on second and seven. The clock continues to move as we come up on 10 minutes to play. Penalty marker down. Pass over the middle is incomplete. Intended for Courtney Hawkins. John Whitman came in motion, turned up the field before the snap of the ball. See, I get real brave, I guess, at these things. You are something else on Thanksgiving Day. Thank you. How many times did you play on Thanksgiving Day? Well, we, when I was with the New York Giants twice, but I was hurt both, both times. <laughs> Illegal motion, offense number 38. The penalty is declined, making it third down. But I was a good spectator, though, Greg. I cheered him on. Watch John Whitman, number 38. Yep, you can see he goes towards the line of scrimmage before the snap of the ball. So Fred McAfee, as he has been doing, comes in on third down situation for the Steelers. Four wide receivers. Stewart throws, almost intercepted by guess who? Stephen Boyd. 
something else. That's the thing that Bobby Ross said that would hurt this team the most if he wasn't in there today. Stephen Boyd has a really good feel for the passing game. He says when you, our other linebackers just don't know how to get back in those zones or places they're supposed to be. Stephen Boyd, he said, is terrific against the pass. Miller will kick it away. Terry Fair back at his own 10. High floaty kick. Fair lets it bounce. And the Steelers can't save it. 50-yard punt. And the Lions will take over at their own 20. Mr. Boyd, you've had yourself a heck of a Thanksgiving Day football game. You know, if you're a turkey, about a month before Thanksgiving, I'd go on a diet. See, then, you know, they'd say, well, he's too skinny. <laughs> you know, just don't eat them. I was just looking at those pictures. Those are really ugly birds, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the Lions come out with four wide receivers on first down from their 20. And they give it to Barry straight ahead. <laughs> So it'll be a second down and about seven. That line from top to bottom along the 30-yard line. You can use your telestrator, Phil. Well, you know, oh, I like drawing on my telestrator. There it goes. That's the CBS first down. And, you know, I think it's a good thing. It's good for football. It's good for the fan at home. They get a chance to, you know, kind of visualize how far the offense has to go. Sometimes you hear it's 10 yards. You don't think about it. But once you see it, it makes you understand a little more. That with time over the middle. Oh, what a shot to Herman Moore. Three Pittsburgh Steelers around him and batch thread of the needle. Well, it was a, a perfect throw. That's how it got in there. But watch what happens. Charlie Batch drops back. A terrific play-action quarterback. LeVon Kirkland. I got it. No, you don't. The perfect throw again. LeVon Kirkland thinks he has this. He's backpedaling. Watch his hand come up. Again, I think he underestimated the speed of how fast that football is going. He didn't react to it quick enough. Sanders dodges a tackler before he's brought down and lost the yard on the play. Now, Charlie Batch, if I'm the coordinator and the coach, which I'm not, but if you're watching the game, you can see he is in rhythm. He is throwing the football. He's throwing it perfect right now. So keep giving him chances. First down is a chance for an offense to play action pass and get the football down the field without having to worry about the pass rush. Second and ten. Quick drop, batch down the sideline. Well, go ahead, Greg Gumbel, describe that one for me. I mean, just another terrific play. Watch, it's a quick pass. They change the coverage. He reshuffles his feet, and then he uses his arm strength to throw the ball down the sideline. And that's why you need, you know, we talk about quarterbacks who can move around a lot. It's good when you can move enough to buy yourself time to throw it down the field because that's where you make big plays in the NFL, throwing the football. First down from the 30 for the Lions. Quick drop, quick pass, Herman Moore. All week long, people have been wondering about Herman Moore and what's wrong with him, and maybe the Lions should trade him. Oh. And Herman Moore has been the most patient of anyone. You don't trade really, really good players in this league. And that's what Herman Moore is. And you can see Charlie Batch. It's going to take these two maybe a while to really get connected. But this time next year, you'll be saying, boy, what a combination. Herman Moore, Johnny Morton, and Charlie Batch. They really got it going. Second and one. And Batch is going to throw it. Yeah, Time. End zone. Touchdown. <laughs> 21 yards to Herman Moore. How about this for a stat? This is the third time all year that Herman Moore has even had his feet in the end zone. A good pump fake by Charlie Batch. Herman Moore gets inside of Carnell Lake.
and goes up and makes the touchdown. They had the offense going. They had the defense of the Steelers guessing. They didn't know what to do. Jason Hansen for the tie. And another good job by the holder, John Jett, reaching behind him for the snap. The Batch family celebrating Thanksgiving the best way they know how. A touchdown pass to Herman Moore. And there is a penalty marker on the play. And it's against the Pittsburgh Steelers. The referee, Phil Luckett, explaining the options to John Jett. Offside, defense, the extra point is good. Penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. Offside number 20. So the yardage will be enforced on the kickoff. 21-yard touchdown pass, Charlie Batch to Herman Moore. Herman Moore celebrating in the end zone. And the Batch family in the stands. Knocked out of the game in the first half with a neck injury. Charlie Batch has come back to lead the Lions to a tying touchdown. 6.36 to play here in the fourth quarter. Huntley and Blackwell are deep. And Huntley out of the end zone. Trying to reverse. Loose football. Detroit has it? Yes! Scott Kowalkowski comes out of the pile with the football. Remember when the football was bouncing so badly earlier in the game for the Detroit Lions? Well, the Lions, they keep it bouncing. You've got momentum on your side. And the Steelers are running a reverse. And Lamar Campbell gets down there and breaks it up just as they're handing the football off. That was a reverse by the Steelers trying to change the momentum of the football game. But the Lions, with hustle, just playing harder right now, they turn it the other way. Batch and the Lions now first and goal from the nine. Sanders. Hit by LeVon Kirkland. Well, you know, I kind of like the call by the Pittsburgh Steelers. They were trying to get everything back on their side. So what do you do? You try to surprise them. Look at the reverse. Lamar Campbell just hustling, makes them run together, causes the fumble. And then Scott Kolakowski again looking for that football once it hits the ground. Second and goal from the eighth. Sanders. And not much around the far side. Dwayne Washington there. But what happened here? I mean, the Detroit Lions, you got the ball first down in this situation. You really got two plays, I think, where you can fake the run and you give your quarterback extra time, the chance to get outside. You've got a lot of options. They don't do it. Barry Sanders, haven't had, he hasn't had success running the football all day. You put it down in this close to the goal line, it makes it even harder to run against this defense. Double tight end set up now for the Lions on third and goal from the eight. the backfield by Nolan Harrison. Nolan Harrison did not go for the fake to Sanders. Well, and he shouldn't. It's third and it's eight, ten yards. Nolan Harrison, he's been in this league a long time. Watch him number 74. He's got backside containment. Oh, okay. He looked at Barry Sanders for a second. And he realized that's not going to be the play. Good play, good discipline by Nolan Harrison. So Hanson comes on. He has been good from 45 and 51 yards, missed a 43-yarder. This one from 35 yards out. And it's good.
The Lions grab the lead with just over four and a half minutes to play on the fumble recovery by Scott Kolkowski. Eighty thousand three hundred and eleven wildly cheering fans have seen their Lions take a 16-13 lead. Hanson the kick. And from the end zone, David Dunn. Hit hard, falls shy of the 20-yard line. Corey Schlesinger made the first hit for the Lions. Well, as we get closer to the first annual Iron Man of the Day Award. Well, let's tell the people how this came about. Please. I'm trying to clear my name here a little. You can't do it, but yeah, go ahead well, and I'll try. try. Is it, you guys make fun of me all the time because my shirts were pressed. I said, well, I iron them. And you couldn't believe I did that. I couldn't. So you just kept making fun of me. And then, of course, I didn't know we were doing this today, but you are the Iron Man. That's it. Cordell Stewart batted in the air, incomplete. Mark Spindler, number 92, was in on Stewart. And you know what happens when the crowd gets noisy in these situations? You kind of have to think, if you're a defender for Detroit, that they're going to throw the football, and it gives those defensive linemen just that little bit of an edge that they need to get to the quarterback. And that time, Cordell Stewart under pressure by two defensive linemen for the Detroit Lions. The crowd comes to its feet on second and ten. Stewart throws and overthrows his intended receiver, Will Blackwell. Brian Westbrook was all over it. Well, that's the one thing, a couple of things have impressed me today. But the Lions defense... How aggressive it is, that's a little surprising, how they try to attack the offenses, but the young secondary has really done a good job of covering people down the field. And Larry Pecatello, when you get a secondary that can start covering receivers down the field, you can get quite creative up front how you can put pressure on the quarterback. You see how the Steelers have done on third and long. This side, complete and out of bounds to Charles Johnson. 12 yards and a first down. Boy, Cordell Stewart. Sometimes I think quarterbacks that have the ability to run never learn how to be good pocket quarterbacks. But watch this. Stands in there and takes a big hit from Luther Ellis. Gets pancake. But he anticipates the throw right to the sideline. Perfect for Charles Johnson. First down now out to the 32-yard line. Great drop, Stewart throws, far side, incomplete. Blackwell, the intended receiver. That's probably one of the things about the Steeler offense, and well, especially Cordell Stewart, that's really impressed me when you look at what he's trying to do as a quarterback, and he's done this year. I mean, just think about it. If you could run as fast as him and dodge some of the players, it's hard to stand in the pocket. If you feel pressure or see it, you know you can run away from it sometimes, but he fights that urge, stand in there, and he makes the throws down the field. Total yards just about even. Bullet complete to Blackwell. And as you can see, he's just shy of first down yardage. Puck continues to move. Coming up on 345 to play here in the fourth quarter. I like the strategy the Steelers are using. Keep throwing the football because what it does, it saves you some time on the clock. 337 and counting. And what happens is if you keep throwing it, if you don't get the first downs and you got a punt, it still gives you time for one more possession. You see how the Steelers have done on short yardage third down situation. Stewart from the shotgun. Throws this side, complete. Courtney Hawkins has a first down. Yeah. 
a lot of these throws by Cordell Stewart are beginning to look alike. Well, there was a receiver in the backfield, Greg, and what happens is they come up to the line of scrimmage, the Steelers, and if it looks like it's not blitz, Cordell Stewart reads that it's not, he sends the receiver, Will Blackwell, out of the backfield, and he goes out for a pass. If he thinks it's blitz, they both stay back there and pick it up. Well, first down from the 45. Bennis lost the football. Stewart recovers, but he will lose a ton of yardage on the play. Well, I'll give you one guess who gets in there and makes this tackle and causes the fumble, Greg. He's been there all day long. Look at Stephen Boyd. The Steelers have not had a running play on this drive. They do a good job of waiting. Finally, they sneak a run in there. You think it gets the defense off guard. Stephen Boyd reads it the whole way, causes the fumble, and good job by Cordell Stewart finally picking it up. It is second and 22. with the big play as we hit the two-minute warning and the Steelers in trouble. Two minutes to play in what has been a dandy Thanksgiving Day matchup between the Pittsburgh Steelers and Detroit Lions. The Steelers third and 26 and you can see on the left side of your screen CBS first down they have to reach the 45-yard line of the Detroit Lions for a first down. Cornell Stewart's got to make sure, no matter what, that he gets rid of the football here to save time. Penalty marker down. Pass over the middle, complete, but now let's check the marker. The flag was thrown on the near side of the field where Hines Ward was matched up with Terry Fair. Well, we're talking about a timely penalty for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Defensive holding. Here's Phil Luckett. Oh. Illegal hands to the face. Defense number 35. The penalty is five yards with an automatic. First down. What a break for the Pittsburgh Steelers. The call is against Robert Bailey. That's why it's a break for the Pittsburgh Steelers. It means automatic first down. Anytime you have a holding call on the defense, watch it. Robert Bailey, a blow to the face. It was quick right at the line of scrimmage, but you can never put your hands in the face of the opposing player. On third and 26, they get the call. It's an automatic first down. What this does, a minute 54. Two timeouts. Now Pittsburgh can run their plays knowing they got four downs to get it done. Each team with two timeouts remaining. Stewart throws near side. Ward complete and out of bounds. Eleven yard pickup. First down Steelers. Well the Lions trying to make it happen. They go after the quarterback again. But Cordell Stewart knows he has single coverage with the defender off on the outside. Makes the perfect throw to the sideline again to Hines Ward. Hines Ward, rookie out of Georgia. Stewart throws, Ward incomplete, and a penalty marker. Terry Fair over the back of Ward. Interference defense number 23. That's an automatic first down. That's the second interference call against Fair on the corner today. Well, let's watch Terry Fair. Let's see where he commits the penalty down the field. The ball's in the air. He's going to go up for it. He puts his hands around the shoulder of the receiver. You can put your hand 
on the receiver if you are a defensive back. But you can't make that hand turn the receiver or slow him down. That time it had to affect the receiver catching the football. And the Steelers are now at the Detroit 34. Offsides. Penalty markers fly as the pass is completed to the far side. Hawkins with the reception. And now let's check the flag. The pass is incomplete. And Hawkins gets into a little shoving match with number 28, Ron Rice. The call is against the Lions. The Lions just not reacting well to the pressure and the situations right now. You know, great example, third and very long. You just can't commit that type of foul. Here again, you're trying to make Offside, the play. Offside, defense number 24, five-yard penalty. It remains first down. That's Kevin Abrams. You're trying to make a play on defense, but you got to have some discipline. Here he is, 24, Kevin Abrams. Doesn't time the blitz. Gets off sides. This drive alone, the Lions have 32 yards in penalties. First and five, the Steelers now at the Detroit 29. McAfee. Not much there. Clock continues to move as we come up on a minute and a half to play here in the fourth. Well, good tackle by Luther Ellis. He's played a terrific game today inside. One of the reasons why Jerome Bettis has not had a good day running and also putting pressure on the quarterback. But now the Steelers, they're in field goal range. Stewart, complete. And out of bounds, Courtney Hawkins inside the 20. I was going to say they're in field goal range. They have two timeouts. Everything is in play on their playbook right now. Runs, you know, they want to use Cordell Stewart for a quarterback draw. Any of those situations, they're alive. Bill Cower looking at his plays. Norm Johnson has made 36 and 38 yard field goals today and has missed from 53 yards. Now Norm Johnson, the field goal kicker, does have a pulled right calf muscle, so they're getting pretty close now where even that wouldn't affect the kicker, but they had to think when they were back there, we got to get a couple first downs to get a little closer. And a timeout on the field now with a minute six to be played. Stephen Boyd got the little mark in the middle of his forehead. He's been, he's been all over the field. It, if I were to ask you, Phil, who is going to get that golden iron for your very first award? Well, let me just say this. A couple things what it represents. The guy that plays the hardest on the football field from start to finish and does a lot of things to help his football team win. So saying that, who does it go to? It has to go to Stephen Boyd, number 57. Didn't even expect him to play today. We were going to talk to him yesterday, and we said, why? He's not going to get in the game. Play. Come on. Got a little blood going. Of course, that's always a good sign for a middle linebacker. That means you're hitting a lot. That's what he's supposed to do. But he has been terrific the, in the passing game, caused a big fumble by Jerome Bettis, the tackles. And, of course, I think the play that I like the most, 10 guys on the field for a field goal. He goes hustling out there and helps his team out when he had to. First down from the 16-yard line. Play action. Stewart, all kinds of time, goes for the end zone, incomplete, and almost intercepted by Brian Westbrook. Everything is in your favor as a quarterback in this situation. you got the running game going, or the thought of it running, and the passing game. Cordell Stewart, don't take this chance. Brian Westbrook was in perfect position. you got a receiver on the inside going out. Look at Brian Westbrook. And that is a good job by Courtney Hawkins breaking up the pass because it was going to be intercepted if he didn't get that left hand in there. Pittsburgh with a minute remaining and one timeout. Bettis. Bettis to the 10. Robert Porsche with the tackle. It'll be third and about three. Well, you know what happens a lot of times 
after that last throw by Cordell Stewart, if I was the coach, I'd be going, boy, that was a shaky decision. What do you do? Do you try to sneak play here by running one, or do you throw the pass? You see how far they have to go for a first down. Bennis. And he's about there. Porsche again with the stop. And we're going to get a measure. Well, it was right on the CBS first down line. And it's close, so they're going to have to measure it. Now, if it's short, what would you do if you were Bill Cowan? I'd kick it. I'd kick the field goal. Well, you still have a timeout left. I'd kick it. You'd kick it. Wouldn't have to think for one second. But you have the bus, Phil. It's all right. He is short. Because you only have 17 seconds. It doesn't give you a lot of time to do other things with your offense. And Pittsburgh, two for two on fourth down today. He wants them to hurry up, I think, get off the field. Well, Pittsburgh is going to use its final time out here, perhaps. Yeah, they'll let the clock run down, so this will be the last play of the game, kicking the tying field goal. I thought maybe for a second they might try the oh why not let's let's call the timeout let's go out there and try to draw them off sides you never know to give us one more chance to score a touchdown maybe to win the game Cordell Stewart is going to set up camp right next to Phil Luckett to call this timeout when the clock reaches about five I would leave extra time on the clock you have the timeouts they're using the last one though right the Steelers stop the clock with four seconds remaining. And Norm Johnson will take to the field to tie this game and, can you say, overtime? Yes. Well, Detroit's defense, it sure looked like it had all the makings of losing control, self-discipline, all the things you work on, not reacting well to adversity, which they had in that drive, but... They hung in tough down here near the goal line. Now, still some things that need tending to. The Steelers need a good snap from Mark Rodenhauser. They need a good hold from John Jett. Not John Jett, rather, Mike Tomzak. The kick is good. One second remaining on the clock, and we are tied at 16. Well, a lot of big plays in that drive. The penalty by Robert Bailey gave the Steelers a chance, and it looked like they might keep it going, have a chance to score. But the play by Brian Westbrook in the end zone, that seemed to take the spirit and kind of the momentum of the Pittsburgh Steelers offense away. And then Bobby Rawls discussing probably complaining about one of the fouls that was called against his defense. The Lions have only taken part in one other overtime game on Thanksgiving Day. That was against the Chicago Bears back in 1980. Well, you know, you, as a player, you've got to think, you know, it's hard to believe. Even Bill Cowher said this to us. He goes, every Thanksgiving Day, he would be standing on the football field with his players. And they would be going through their practice on a Thursday and go, gosh, can you imagine if you were out there playing a game today, what it would be like? We're still sore and tired from the previous Sunday, and you, know, you get three days off, and you got to come back and play this game. But once you get here, all the bumps and bruises for Sunday, they're gone. Your, your emotions, you know, the fact that you just, you know when it's time to blow that whistle, you got to compete and try to win the football game. With some help from Detroit penalties, pretty good job of driving the ball downfield by Stewart in the Steeler offense. This will be the last play of regulation, barring a penalty. Terry Fair, Fair breaks it to the near side and pulls down at the 45-yard line. Dante Jones made the tackle as time expired. Terry Fair is a guy who has only returned two kickoffs for a touchdown 
so far this season. Well, he gave the crowd a little scare there that time. Got out of the pack, but the Steelers being real safe and had some people on the backside hustling, even if he'd have broke away from that last tackle, there were still three or four more guys to make the tackle. So now Phil Luckett is out at midfield for the coin toss. Of course, there's not much a decision to make here in the dome. We don't have to worry about the win. You just want the ball. Carnell Lake and Jerome Bettis out there for the Steelers. Using fourth quarter timing rules. Each team receives two timeouts. The first team to score wins the game. We'll have a toss to determine who receives, who will call it from Pittsburgh. Number 36, heads, tails, tails, heads. Call it plays in the air. Heads is the call. He said heads, it is a tails. Oh, I believe he said tails. He did. You want to take the ball? Look at Jerome Bettis. He's too. What's going on? Detroit has won the toss. We'll receive. Jerome Bettis said tails. Oh, my. Well, we'll find out. Let's. Now we're going to start getting all the officials out here for the coin toss to see what's going on. Let's go back and listen to the coin toss. The argument continues on the sideline in front of Bill Cower. Here it is. Let's take a listen. said tails well when we come back the lions we think have won this coin toss and will receive happy thanksgiving well we mentioned this a few moments ago back in 1980 after chicago bears quarterback vince evans tied the score at 17 on the last play of regulation david williams returned the opening kickoff in overtime 95 yards for a touchdown. The Bears win 23-17 in the shortest overtime game in National Football League history. That was in 1980. As we move into overtime now. In overtime, the first team to score is the winner. <laughs> the coin toss sometimes determines the first possession. <laughs> it will run 15 minutes in length, and each team gets two timeouts. Well, you can hear on the audio, Jerome Bettis does say tails. Yes, he did. So during the commercial, we had a look at Jerome Bettis. He was explaining it to Bill Cower. I called what you said, Coach, tails. And actually, Bill Cower had a smile on his face. It's just some things that you can't fight it. The bus wondering if maybe he had lapsed into some other language down there. Norm Johnson to kick to a dangerous kick return. Terry Fair. Fair. At the 14. 25. Good job. Good job. the 33, 34 yard line. Chris Oldham with the tackle. Well, the Detroit Lions, as you bring your offense out on the field, what do you do? You go back to what was working so well, they got you back in the game and let you get the lead. That's by putting the ball in the hands of Charlie Betch especially on first down with play action passes get it down the field you only need to make about three good plays to get in field goal range let's remember we have had to this point a relatively quiet barry sanders batch gonna throw down the field for more got it inside the 40 yard line one of the reasons why a lot of teams love big tall wide receivers Nobody in the middle of the field. The Pittsburgh Steelers completely fooled by the fake running play, but Herman Moore just going up and just snatches this ball out of the air. Carnell Lake gets his hand up there with Herman Moore's, but Herman Moore pulls it down, and Greg, the safeties, Lee Flowers and Darren Perry were both up near the line of scrimmage on the run fake. First down at the 37 of the Steelers. Trying to set up the screen. Cardell has it. And that will get nothing. In fact, it'll lose a yard. 
Carlos Emmons made the stop. Charlie Batch, I, I heard it from Sylvester Crooms, the offensive coordinator. The best thing he does is play action fake and throw on first down. Fake into Barry Sanders. Watch the safeties. They go running up. There's nobody in the back here. That enabled Herman Moore to be wide open. Second and 11. Batch to throw again. This side incomplete. Intended for Moore. Let's check in on Aaron Kate and Armin. Greg, I was before the game, I was watching Hanson very carefully. He goes through a very scripted routine, a visualization, if you will, before he kicked the ball deep into the 50-yard line and beyond. As you'll see him in the game, he'll do it just before he kicks it, but it could become very interesting. He's played this out in his mind several times before the game. Back to you. Thanks, Armin. As you saw, his career-long field goal is from 56 yards out. That last play was the first time this game that Charlie Batch lost control of the football, had a wide-open receiver, but couldn't get it to him. Ron Rivers in the backfield for the Lions. Batch under pressure and is sacked. A penalty marker is thrown. For progress stop, fourth down. And I think Phil Luckett is unaware of the flag, and he's going to check it out right now. It looked like, for me, there was a face mask when they were sacking Charlie Batch. It is a face mask, and it's against the Steelers. You and talk about your costly penalty. And it's 15 yards, personal foul. Watch what happens. He's in trouble. Chris Odom has a hold of the helmet, hits the face mask. Personal foul, grasping the face mask, defense number 24. 15 yards, automatic, first down. Chris Oldham does try to let go of the face mask. I don't know if it's worthy of 15 yards. Well, the problem with letting go it means that you had hold of it at one point. Well, that's right, but there's a five-yard face mask and a 15-yard face mask. Recall the penalties and how harmful they were to the Lions at the end of regulation. The Steelers killing themselves here. That sack would have taken the Lions out of field goal range. Jason Hansen looks on. And right now, if they gain no yards, it would be a 50-yard field goal. Bill Power pleads his case. First down from the 33. Sanders. To the 25. Close to another first down. And with that run, Barry Sanders goes over 15,000 yards for his career. He joins Walter Payton in very exclusive company. Walter Payton, 16,726. And as the officials check for a Detroit first down, they are that short. Let's go back to Barry Sanders. Well, the Steelers have done such a good job all day of stopping Barry Sanders, but look at this. Tommy Bardell, Jim Pine. Jeff Hardy's opened up a big hole inside for Barry Sanders to run into, and he gets about nine yards on the run. Sanders came into this game needing 30 yards. We really thought he'd get there somewhere around late first quarter, early second. Well, but you, you never can tell. Yeah, you can. And in the Pittsburgh Steelers, just when I heard the fact that they were going to play aggressive and just try to overrun him, immediately my first thought is, boy, he's going to have to really get a couple big runs against a defense that overpursues and overreacts to him. On second and one. Sanders. Doesn't appear to have gotten there. That big orange stripe will tell you that. Third down. Well, the Steelers had about everybody on defense except the two corners that time up near the line of scrimmage. 
And Detroit's going to send their field goal unit on in this situation, third and short. The reason you do this, in case there's a bad snap, fall on it, you get to try to kick it again from seven yards farther back. But first, the Lions will use one of their two timeouts here in overtime. We'll be right back. On third and one, the Lions will look to Jason Hansen to end it right here. He is three of four today. In the last two seasons, he is 45 for 47 under 50 yards and as Armin Katayan reported a few moments ago Jason Hansen visualizing how it's going to go well that's the way to do it you know when you're trying to do something perform or execute something athletic if you get positive thoughts in your head it makes it a lot easier for your body to do those things so that's what he's trying to do think about making it have no negative thoughts and just be positive this should be about a 41 yard field goal attempt while Bill Cower rages at the officials on one sideline Bobby Ross contemplates on the near side you know I understand Bobby Ross he's got a young quarterback Charlie Batch I understand the situation but I think this is a pretty conservative approach I would have come running it up in there trying to get a little closer instead of a 41 yard field goal 42 yards will be the attempt Hanson for the game. And now the whistle in the line. And the Steelers call timeout. They're going to try to freeze Jason Hansen a little bit more. We'll take a break and see what happens. Bill Cower has not stopped pacing the sideline in the last 10 minutes. Well, this team had so many chances in this game to make a play to really put the Detroit Lions in a situation where they probably couldn't recover, but they could never make that one play to put them away. And the Lions, who played hard all day on both sides of the football, finally strung some pass plays together with Herman Moore, Charlie Batch, and put themselves in good position. Jason Hansen all alone at midfield as his teammates huddle about 15 yards away. Well, he knows now this time he gets a chance to kick it. Steelers cannot call another timeout right now. If he gets away from the pack, doesn't want to be around anybody. This will be a 42-yard attempt. And here we go. The Detroit Lions today, they played harder and longer than the Pittsburgh Steelers. They deserve to win the football game. They took the kickoff off of a coin toss that they did not win at the beginning of overtime. John Jett with the perfect hold for Hanson. And it splits the uprights right down the middle for Jason Hansen. Jason Hansen says, piece of cake. Wow, he didn't even get excited. Come on, Jason, game-winning field goal. Bill Cower says, well, that's how it goes. 19-16 is our final score from Pontiac, Michigan. Stay tuned now for the NASDAQ Amex post-game report. That includes post-game interviews. We'll be sending you off to Jim Nance in New York right after these messages. You're taking a look at number 57, the first recipient of the Iron Man Award on Thanksgiving Day. Thanks for joining us, everyone, and happy Thanksgiving. You've been watching the NFL on CBS.